Brethren, we have just come out of the days of unleavened bread, and one of the themes associated with it is that of humility. We saw how Pharaoh initially refused to allow the children of Israel to leave Egypt because he did not want to humble himself. And let's go to Exodus chapter 10, Exodus chapter 10, and just, just, let's look at that. Exodus 10 verse 3, so Moses and Aaron came into Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord God of Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Brethren, Pharaoh kept refusing to allow the children of Israel to leave Egypt, even though he and his nation were suffering from the various plagues that God was pouring out on them. He refused to listen because of his pride, and this ultimately led to the death of all the firstborn in Egypt and, even, and also to his own death. Now his pride led to the hardening of his heart. And let's look at that in Exodus chapter 7. And let's begin in verse 10. Exodus 7 and verse 10. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them as the Lord had said. Brethren, Pharaoh's heart grew hard after this first miracle that was performed. And it subsequently grew even harder as the ten plagues were poured out on Egypt. And let's go over to chapter 8 to see more evidence of that. Exodus 8 and verse 15. And this was after the second plague of frogs was poured out. Verse 15. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not heed them as the Lord had said. Brethren, the Bible records that Pharaoh continued to harden his heart even as the ten plagues were being poured out. Now, there are important lessons we can learn from what happened to Pharaoh. So, in the sermon and this morning, brethren, I want to focus on the issue of hardening of a person's heart and the warning God gives to us regarding this. So for the title of the sermon, it is Hardening of the Heart. Now, brethren, Pharaoh was not the only individual in the Bible who hardened their hearts. There are many others who suffered from this problem. However, God focuses on one group in particular, and that group was the children of Israel. And let's look at that now. So let's go to the New Testament, and let's go to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 3, and let's begin in verse 7. Hebrews 3 verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, 
Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and saw my woods forty years. Therefore I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Brethren, these verses are actually quoted from Psalms 95 and verses 7 to 11. And you can always read to that in your private Bible study. And brethren, they are a warning from God to his people to not make the same mistake, mistakes that the children of Israel made. Here in these verses, God mentions some of the mistakes they made. And the first one he mentions is the hardening of their hearts. And that is the one I want to focus on today. And let's read over verse 8, which says, Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness. Now the question is, when did they harden their hearts? When did they rebel? The brethren, this happened when the children of Israel refused to go and enter the promised land. And that's recorded in Numbers 13 and 14. Now, 10 of, the, 10 of the 12 spies brought back an evil report about the promised land. And they encouraged the people to not go forward to the promised land. And they instead encouraged them to return to Egypt. Only Joshua and Caleb said that the children of Israel should go forward and enter the promised land. And when the children of Israel decided to follow the advice of the ten spies, this is when God decided that they would not enter the promised land and would instead die in the wilderness over 40 years. Only Joshua and Caleb and their families would be able to then enter the promised land. Now, God is here using the example of the children of Israel to warn us in his church to not harden our hearts also. And this is so important to God that he does not only say it once, but four times in chapters 3 and 4 of Hebrews. And let's just quickly look at those uh, instances. So let's drop down to verse 13 of Hebrews chapter 3. Verse 13 says, But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Let's drop down to verse 15. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. And let's go over to chapter 4 and verse 7. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 7. It says, Again he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a time as it has been said, today you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Now, brethren, when God repeats something so many times within a few verses, we need to pay attention to it. Now, what were some of the things that led to the hardening of the hearts of the children of Israel? Well, one of them was unbelief. And let's look at chapter two, um, verse 12 of Hebrews chapter 3. Verse 12 of Hebrews 3 says, 
Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. And let's just drop down to verse 19. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Besides unbelief, brethren, another factor was a lack of obedience. And let's look at verse 18 of chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? Brethren, the children of Israel did not obey God. Their disobedience and unbelief resulted in the hardening of their hearts and eventually led to them failing to enter God's rest, which was the promised land. And the message for us today, brethren, is if we allow disobedience and unbelief to harden our hearts, we run the risk of failing to enter the kingdom of God. And let's go to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 11, where God issues a warning to us. Hebrews 4 verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Brethren, we must be diligent to ensure that we do not allow our hearts to be hardened. Because if we do, we will eventually resist God and rebel against Him just like the children of Israel. Now, besides the children of Israel, the Bible records other examples of people who harden their hearts. One example was Judas. Judas was with Jesus Christ for three and a half years. He heard his words and saw his example, but he did not change his heart. Instead, he hardened his heart and eventually betrayed Christ. And we know he lost it all. The scribes and Pharisees made the same mistake. They saw the miracles of Christ. And instead of softening their hearts, they hardened their hearts and eventually killed Christ. So, in conclusion, brethren, God wants us to avoid hardening our hearts because it will lead to our spiritual death and destruction. And for our final scripture, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel 36. And let's begin in verse 26. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Brethren, God gives us his Holy Spirit to soften our heart. Are we being led by the Holy Spirit? Or are we resisting it? Our hearts can be influenced for good or evil, by the Holy Spirit or by the temptations that Satan directs to us. It all depends on who we allow ourselves to be influenced by. Brethren, during this coming year, do not allow our hearts to be hardened by pride, unbelief, 
and disobedience. Instead, we must allow God to create a soft, pliable, and submissive heart in us so that we will be able to enter God's rest, which is the kingdom of God.